Thanks, Lauren. Good morning, uh, members, officers, health cams. Um, welcome to Grants Advisory Committee today, 0830, Friday, 26 November 2021. I'm just going to go through the um, agenda. Uh, Aaron, have we got any apologies for absence, please? Good morning, Chair. Thank you very much. We have an apology for absence from Councillor Bill Handley and uh, Councillor Martin Khan is subbing in his place. Thank you, Martin. Absolutely superb. Um, Apologies, Councillor, is that better? Uh, yes. Just so, just for anybody watching live stream, that's uh, apologies for absence from Councillor Bill Handley with Councillor Martin Khan subbing in place. That would be the many thousands watching the live stream. Right. Um, uh, declarations of interest from members gathered here today. So no, thank you very much. And um, can we move to the minutes of the last meeting, please? I'll go through the usual process of by page just sing out if you have anything. Page one. Page two. Page three. And there's only the signature on the back of page four. So is that okay? I'll sign those off. Okay, thank you very much. Sign those, Aaron. Thanks. Okay, agenda item number four, which is the review of the community chess grant criteria. Now, I believe that will be Vicky. Good morning, Vicky. Thank you very much, as I say, for coming in early. That's brilliant. Good morning, Chair. Thank over, you. Over to you. Thanks. Good morning, Chair. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, we are, before I start, Jay's not here today. Um, this will be my last grants advisory committee, and I'll be handing over to Cecilia. Um, so Catherine's here today and Cecilia because um, Catherine will be overseeing um, the, the grants supporting Cecilia when necessary. Um, so that's that's that bit. And I will crack on now with um, the review of the Community Test Grant. Um, hopefully you've all read through our report. There's basically four amendments that we'd like to make to the the criteria and the process and um, the first to bring in wildlife enhancement grants um, which is the ten thousand pounds that was previously these these grants were previously delivered by planning we'd like to bring them into the community chest criteria to support biodiversity projects um, this change will obviously require amendments to the community chest criteria which we have included in the appendix um, parish councils will be eligible to apply for this funding, provided they're not already in receipt of the grant from the council's ZCC fund for the same financial year. It's just trying to give the um, biodiversity grants a more transparent process. Obviously, we have quite a, a rigorous and, you know, very established process within community chess grants. And we can basically add that money to the pot which will, which could mean that we'd actually spend more on biodiversity and deliver those um, biodiversity gains that is important to the council. Um, I don't know if you want to sort of consider each one or I'll just provide an overview. Um, would you like to just do, do the overview for the moment and then as, as we go yep. through the discussion then we can perhaps drill down if that's okay. Yeah, of course, Thank you. yeah. So the next is to introduce um, fun, well, the post-COVID funding um, that we have, an amount of £50,000 to assist with the community-led plans, which is this post-COVID support, um, which is quite a big project within sustainable communities, um, to use this money to support the creation of community-led plans. Um, parish councils will also be eligible to apply for this funding. Um, and this will be available until the end of October 2023, which is the time we have officer support on the project. And then finally, we'd like to increase the upper award for all community chess grants from £1,000 to £2,000. Just feel that we'd be able to support projects better. Um, it will enable people to, well, projects and community groups to not have to shop around for too much other support. And as we've seen over, you know, even the last few months, a lot of
projects are quite in excess of the thousand pounds that you know was the maximum fund previously and everything is going up in cost the cost of materials we've all seen is it's harder to get and also much more expensive than we've seen previously and the, and the last item is just to in, just to reference community in, interest companies as being eligible to apply to the community chess grant fund i mean they are eligible to apply but it just needs to be um stipulated within the criteria just for clarity that's a very brief overview um, would welcome any questions on that. Thank you very much, Vicky. Uh, Claire? Yeah. Um, yes, thank you, Vicky. Um, I've got a question concerning a community-led plan. I'm not quite sure myself how that will look in our villages, what a community-led plan might consist of. Um, but I'm aware that some villages are interested in doing, um, perhaps putting together a village design guide and in 2018, there was funding for, I think it was eight village design guides. And I know that's more of a professional sort of planning document. Um, but my question is, could some of this money be used uh, for assistance with community? I can, see, I can see the lead member finance shaking his head. So that answers my question. <laughs> OK, so I won't continue down that line. I thought I would just try it on. Um, and so then uh, also my question is, you know, what would, if, if a village wanted to, um, in a typical village which has, say, 10 little organisations going on, you know, a bowls club, a craft club, choir, or whatever, um, they would presumably not be able to apply individually for this grant. It would have to be, they'd have to create a community led plan in order to access this money. Yeah, I suppose. Um... You know, those individual groups, if they needed some uh, funding, could apply to the normal community chest um, funding as, 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 you know, as the applications we see anyway. Um, what this is trying to um, encourage is for communities to basically build on that, you know, that sense of um, inclusion that we've seen over COVID and just see what villages and parishes want um, to to build on and improve within their communities and the purpose of this money is to kind of encourage them to perhaps take on a community-led plan um, or assist them with something they're already doing um, so you know surveying the residents putting on events I mean it you know the pro I mean Emma and I Emma Dyer and I are working on the project along with um, Catherine and we're kind of seeing that the range of what people want to do is quite diverse, um, but they all want to build in that sense of inclusion again and, and build on what they've already established throughout COVID. And we just want to kind of enhance that and give them some you know, financial support where possible to, to achieve what, what they can within their communities. I mean, Catherine, if you wanted to add anything on more to that, um, then do. I think you've pretty much covered it. Thank you, Vicky. I just I, it's for the creation of the plan itself. It's not for the project. This particular pot of funding would be ring fenced and it wouldn't be used for the projects that would be delivered as a consequence of the creation of a community led plan. But those organisations that you speak of, Councillor Daunton, that might want to apply for funding anyway, would be able to do so from the other side of the community chest fund. As Vicky said, so um... Ladies, could I just, just clarify, Catherine and Vicky, that in the criteria, if you like, when people look at the, the actual, you know, whether or not they're eligible or not, would, would uh, Claire's points be able to be vocalised, so to speak, as, as text, so that it gives people the, and this is already there, of course, um, gives people the option, you know, the, the ability to understand that they are able to apply and the criteria, you know, you can't, if you want to all do it, then you need to come down together etc would that be something that could we, be added in we think we've got that covered if you feel as though that's not clear and wouldn't be clear to groups applying um we would be able to add in something that said yes those um explained even more clearly that the costs in, um, involved with de delivering projects are eligible from the community chest itself um we've tried to just explain that 
community led plans themselves are funded by this extra money. So I I think it's clear. All right. I'm all glad by you. It's just we do we do have some people applicants who get very confused. So we've said perhaps take the lowest common denominator. We've said cost involved with undertaking a community. So what what under a heading of what should be what can be funded? We've said cost involved with undertaking a com and creating a community led plan brackets resulting projects will only receive funding where they would have been eligible for the community chest anyway. Right. Yeah. So. I'm confused. Dot com. Mm. Um, but firstly, I, I haven't quite grasped. What sort of community led plan are we actually talking about? Are we talking about um, uh, electric points for cars at the village? At the village? No. See, you're shaking your head, and I'm but, but so those, I'm all confused. Those all, would be the kinds of projects that might come out of the creation of a community-led plan. That would be a project that would emerge from it, and then if it were eligible, then that project could apply to the community just like any other project. The creation of the plan is the surveying of an entire village or community, depending on how what, how broadly you want your community-led plan to, to cover um, community events, those sorts of things, the costs of if you're going to print a survey or print the plan then the costs involved in that, but not the project work that comes out of it. It's just the creation of an action plan and priorities of different kinds of projects that a village would like to undertake. Some of those will be health and well-being focused, some will be environment focused, as you've said, um, some will be sports and activities focused. Those activities themselves can't have this money, but the creation of the plan that brings all of those together, that's what this is for, because it's using post-COVID support money to help communities deliver on the progress they've already made through COVID and might want to continue and um, broaden. Hmm. 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 Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Personally, but still. Any other questions from colleagues? Pete? Um, a little bit following from um, Sue's point. Um, uh, I'm not against this fund. It actually sounds very sensible, especially the fact that we're going to roll it through to October 2023. I think from my point of view, the only thing that's kind of missing at the moment is some real tangible examples because i do share sue's concern that if we presented this to the parish they would sort of my parishes anyway would scratch their head and and but but if we gave so so i think that the, the officers have some good ideas in in their head um and i don't want to stop this i think it's very very positive but i, I think our parishes will really need some help saying you know, here are five, six, seven, whatever it is, examples um, to, to be able to do it. Otherwise, we're going to get 500 questions. So, Catherine, can I, do you want to come back on, on Pete's point, Catherine? And sorry, John, yeah, if I may. The work that Emma and Vicky, Emma Dyer and Vicky have been doing to create the community led planning toolkit, which is now live on the website, provides you with lots of examples of what community led plan is, how to do it, action planning templates and so on. So um, there, there is um, a whole toolkit there available to support parishes. Emma's been doing quite a lot of, um, and Vicky have been doing quite a lot of promotion of this at things like um, more member briefings and in a workshop that was held last week with Councillor Handley. Um, lots of parishes, 30 plus parishes came along and were interested in how they should continue beyond COVID, either with a community led plan or with projects that they just want to set up and get running immediately. Um, so there are lots of parishes already talking about it and doing it, or who already have a community led plan and want to just refresh those. Um, so there is a lot of support. I think if your parishes don't know about it yet, then we need to push that comms even further. It's gone out on social media and, and in other ways. And as I say, it's on the website. So um, there, it, there are examples and there are examples on the website of, of what, what this means. Um, 
And just need to get that message out to people, I think. Catherine, before John comes in, you have just ask Chris, bearing, bearing in mind that uh, three people, including, or four if you like, including myself, have mentioned the things that have been mentioned, if you like, I'm not going to go over it again. But you know, when, in, the, in, the, in the notes here, in the agenda item, in Appendix A, on the actual website, where it says community-led plan, brackets, parish plan, yep. can that be made into a link, or is it already a link, right? So that that's the example. So when someone, they read, they read through that, they go, oh, the and they just click on that, and then they go to the examples. of So yep. we, we can actually feed people the information, but just by a link. If we've already done the, or say we, if you guys have already done the work, then we just need to link all that document on the front page, so to speak, to those other documents, so yes, people yeah. can be led by the nose a little, I think, yeah? That's fine. When we, when we drafted this, that page wasn't yet live. It's now live, so that can easily, in the criteria on the website, these criteria will be there for Community Chest, and we can just link that across to the other pages we've got. That's not a problem. That's brilliant. Okay, thank you. John, over to you. Yeah, and, and thank you, Catherine and, and, and Vicky. Um, I mean, this is hugely important, actually, um, because we have seen um, in many of our villages uh, people coming together uh, because of COVID, and we don't want to lose that uh, community um, spirit and and partnership that that we've seen developing in in our in our villages. And and this is really, um, first of all, to help those that are taking this forward, um, but also to encourage other parish councils to, to pick it up as well. And so as much information as possible and guidance, <clears throat> um, I know you're developing, I think you're developing a toolkit, aren't you, for, for this as well. So this is all part of that. Um, and I, I know, you know, when, when we developed our parish plan, which was back in, oh, um, you know, getting on for 15 years ago now in Fullbourne. I mean, one strand of that parish plan was looking at what we now call well-being. I mean, we didn't use that terminology back then, but it was principally about, you know, setting up groups or bringing groups together. Um, and that created um, a, an amenity group called um, Fullbourne Forum, which has been going now for uh, near on... Um, well, near on the whole time, you know, near on 15 years now. Um, and that spun off into Fullborn Arts and other other groups. So, it and, and we didn't have the funding for that then. I mean, it'd been brilliant if we had had this, this pot of money because um, we could have done actually even more. But so I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about this. And, and I think this is a, a way forward to um, develop uh, community inclusion in our villages. So uh, I, I'm all for this. And I say um, we definitely do need because there are obviously um, some villages are doing it and 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 some, you know, quite rightly, you know, and appreciate that don't really understand what it's all about. So we do need the communication to back up this this fund. But um, I, I say I'm, I'm, I'm very supportive of it. Thank you, John. Claire, and then Martin. Uh, uh, thanks, and, and just to follow on what John was saying, I was actually present, I think it was last week, yes, last Thursday, at a, a discussion at a parish council where um, it wasn't directly related to community-led planning, but it could have been. Um, but there was still some confusion over what a community-led plan is, as opposed to putting effort into a village design guide and a neighbourhood plan. And the, the latter two are very much planning with a capital P document. And so I think it's really important to make a distinction between the three so that people know exactly um, where they're going, how they make a decision on that. Catherine? Yeah, just to say that on that basis, we've taken away any reference to planning in our documents and website when we refer to community-led plans. And it's now plan or plans, not planning, just to just to help help that a little bit. And we've arranged for our second workshop um, on the 7th of March to include um, a section that will be delivered um, by Alison Talkington, who's the council's officer who leads on neighbourhood plans. 
um, to do a section on the differences between neighbourhood plans, community led plans and the other options that are available to communities if they want to take them. So we're doing what we can and hopefully the toolkit also makes that distinction as well between the two. Can, can, I, can I just add on that? On that workshop, could members be invited as well, please, to the workshop? Yes, members, members were invited to the first one and they would be again. They'll be invited to, to everyone. I think we're going to do them quarterly as a minimum. I think, yeah. what, I think, yeah. sorry, hang on, go on, uh, Pete and Martin's next, but hang on. Uh, I'm just thinking here, what, what I'm hearing is that we need to, as I said earlier, we need to have the lowest form of or common denominator. So some parish councils that I attend have a very different, a different ability to understand some of the language that we use uh, as, as a council. And just because it has the word plan in it, as Claire said, they, they assume it's to do with planning. And then you have the 50 questions trying to explain that it's not and it's something else. I mean, it really does need to be the idiot's guide. And I mean that in the politest way. If, if, we, if we work on the basis that the, that the, the, the audience that we're aiming this at haven't got a clue what we're talking about, that will then serve us well. If I can invite you all to have a look at the toolkit then, we'd happily take your feedback. So if you want to have a look at the toolkit as it is on the website, I can pop the link in the chat soon. Um, then you'd be able to just have a look and see whether you think we've kind of hit the right tone there. OK, great. Poor old Martin's been waiting here. So That's OK. I simply, I was going to comment that this is not, a, this is not new material, uh, ideas. It's been going on for, for, for many years. I was... Um, I worked 25 to 30 years ago for an organisation called the Countryside and Community Research Unit at the, what was then the Cheltenham and Gloucester College of Higher Education, and the University of Gloucester, which was running a scheme called Village Appraisals, which was very much this thing. Uh, that time was before neighbourhood planning, so it was broader. It included both neighbourhood planning and the social side. Mm -hmm. But, but, but there's, there were lots of examples then of villages which took it up. So the, the, the methods are there. Therefore, the toolkit's vital, vital really, because... What well, was clear from that, you need to have some guidance to make it work, to get some idea of what you sh should be doing and good examples. And um, therefore, I would agree with the people who commented that the, the, the talk is important. I will go away and have a look at this and see what, uh, what might be, um, see, 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 see how that's done, but it's, it is important. Thank you, Martin. Pete? Um, yeah, just quickly, Chair. Um, what, what would help my parishes a lot, and I think we already have it, and ma maybe Catherine has it at her fingertips, was um, a sort of summary table that, that says this is what's in, would be in a community-led plan, this is what would be in a local neighbourhood plan, and then it very clearly sets out the two things, and I think that would help a lot. Yes, that does exist. There's a document that talks about more than just community-led plans and neighbourhood plans. It talks about community right to build and all sorts of other design statements that that um, that, that villages, parishes can can take forward. So that's there and that's um, embedded in the toolkit. The link is now in the uh, chat. Thank you, Catherine. Are we all done on this particular subject? Super. Um, I think we'll go to the next question then, or the next one is number three in the executive summary. So that's the, um, no, not sorry, beg your pardon, number four, oh, sorry, number four, <clears throat> increasing the upper limit from 1,000 to 2,000 for the community chest. But are we going to discuss that or are we delighted? That's a double, as Vicky described, the things have gone up in my head. Brilliant. So, okay, we'll take that as a, a big pardon, Peter. So, so just for clarity, so, so this is going forward. So any parishes received a thousand, they, they don't come back and apply for another thousand. This is, this is for new schemes. Is that right? It's not retrospective, is it? No. And, and it no. doesn't, and it doesn't apply to those that are. We're going to go through today either because of course this is a proposal yeah. that hasn't been decided when they applied just to okay can you remind can you remind us a segment is there a date for it to start yeah march no is it march it can, it can start from the next round yeah so i think the next, be best. next consideration will change the criteria and publicize the fact that the the upper limit has has increased 
but we yeah. could start it immediately if that's what you'd like to do. Yeah. And would we be able to start it from January? Yes. I'm you'd like to start it from sort of the new year? Yeah. You okay with that, John? Yeah, we have enough money in the in in the budget, right. uh, in the pot. You agree with that? Yeah. Pete, Martin, you agree with that? January, okay. Yeah. That if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, the sooner the better to me. I think it's a uh, thousand was really rather small in current terms. Thanks. Okay, uh, colleagues. Then the recommendation is on uh, number seven, item item seven. Recommend that the Grant Advisory Committee approve these proposals and recommend them to the lead member for finance. So, do I have that as a, a requirement for a vote, or do we do this by affirmation? Oh, yeah. Number five is just an inclusion, isn't it, of, of six? So I think I was taking that as red. Are we all agreed? Thank you very much. Make a note of that. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number five, which is grants to the voluntary sector, zero carbon grants. Yeah. Who's leading on this? Uh, Siobhan. Good morning, Siobhan. Over to Good you. Morning. So this report relates to the zero carbon communities grant scheme. Uh, it was drafted by Eleanor Haynes. Um, who apologises she's not able to be here this morning, but I will um, run through it. It covers two matters. Firstly, it returns for consideration um, by the committee the application for a zero carbon community funding from the Parochial Church Council of Gamlingay with Hatley St George and East Hatley for £5,000 towards costs of solar panels and battery storage on the church roof. This application was recommended for approval by uh, Grants Advisory Committee and at Councillor Williams' request is returned for reconsideration. Secondly, it sets out that due to unusual circumstances, it hasn't been possible to make two of the awards recommended at the last uh, Grants Advisory Committee and agreed by Councillor Williams, meaning that £20,544 remains of this year's funds uh, unallocated. And the report presents four options for the spending of this sum and recommends that it is rolled over into next year's Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme. It should be noted that if the award for solar panels and battery storage to the church roof is not made, then this also um, would be added to this un unallocated um, uh, uh, portion. So I'm happy to run through further details on either of this, these matters, if that would be helpful. Um, I called Mr Hissett, the applicant uh, for the, the, the church project yesterday. So hopefully if you have any questions regarding this application, I, I may be able to answer them. I hope. Um, okay. Well, I was going to ask uh, if I could ask John to um, let us know why he asked for it to be brought back. Uh, yes, well, well, I I was minded not to support this um, because having read the re the previous report, it seemed to me that the church were asking us um, basically for a grant to put PV PV on on their roof without any firm commitment to improving their energy efficiency, um, either in terms of energy efficient light bulbs or, or uh, the gas set replacing the gas, gas central heating. And to be honest with you, there are other ways in which they could obtain that money to get to get PV panels on, on their roof. And, and I didn't think it was an appropriate use of the community's fund um, without that being part of a a bigger project to um, improve the energy efficiency of that building. Um, that's why I was minded not to not to agree to it. Also, I mean, I understand talking to members that um, it was quite con controversial anyway when it came to committee, uh, and there wasn't a clear um, decision 
made on it. So that's why I asked for us to get some more information and to to come back to this meeting to have a to, to, for me to hear why we should go ahead with this. Um, and I've seen now that um, um, we are talking about. Um, yeah, I'm still I'm still concerned that we're still not talking about improving the energy efficiency of that building. Um, so that that's where that's that's why it's back here. I'm minded not to. I'm still minded not to approve it, to be honest, on on the most recent information. But I'm I'm open to persuasion. Claire. Um, yeah, so um, I don't want to rehearse all the um, discussion that we had last time because George, uh, John is right. We did have quite a long discussion about this. Um, I, I, I would support it, but I think I'd want to see it in a broader context because there are many churches who want to do this kind of thing. And I think it was last year we supported St. John the Evangelist in Waterbeach um, doing quite a big um, project on energy efficiency. Um, and I happened to be in there last week and it was very nice and warm. Um, so uh, my thoughts on this are that we are likely to get more of these kinds of applications. And I would really like us to look at the, it in the round because within community chest, we are able to support buildings of historic interest. So in a way, this brings two things together, both a zero carbon grant and a community chess grant. So I would like to be able to have a, a criteria that helped other churches to do this kind of thing, because I think it would hit both of those, both community chest and zero carbon grant. On this, I'm, not, I'm still not sure myself, but I'd like us to think about you know how we would do that in relation to other churches because I'm sure that we're going to get more of these types of application. Well, I'm a bit uncertain as well, but um, I mean something that I would want to know is what the what the electricity is going to be used for. A large church like this, um, few, uh, will probably have a little bit of lighting, um, and uh, it won't be. Solar panels will never be of any use really for heating because they, they won't generate when it's needed and it won't be of a scale which will have make, make much, even with a heat pump, won't be, produce enough to be able to heat at least at the times of year when you're, when you're wanting the heating. So it's not really, I, I think in a sense that heating is a red herring, it's not going to substitute that, it's going to substitute lighting if you've got cooking, if you've got washing facilities. Now within a church, not a normal, uh, uh, ancient church, like uh, there might be a bit of lighting. I can't see them probably having cooking facilities, but maybe there's a maybe there's a, a village hall next by which can be supplied by this. So I would want to know how the how the energy is going to be used really um, for it to be useful. Uh, as a pilot, I mean that is interesting. It will be interesting to see, and maybe that's on its own is a, a justification. But um, I do feel there's perhaps a need for a little bit more information. Um, at least that for what we've been provided, maybe it's been provided to the um, to, to the officers, but we haven't uh, we received it. Thank you, Martin. That's a good question, Siobhan. So, is there is there much more detail in the application that we haven't seen? There, there, there isn't in the application, but I have some further detail. Or, or to, to be honest, actually, I'm not entirely sure what was in the, um, I could check, but what, what you've been provided. I can add a little bit of information which is relevant to the questions which are being asked. And um, so in terms of the use of the electricity, it is for the, it, it, at the moment, it would only be used for the lighting and also for the pump of the, the, that works with the gas um, heating system to pump water to pump hot water around the 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 church uh, i think one thing which is relevant is that the um the 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 pcc have clearly thought through where they're going in terms of their net zero aspirations and they know that a heat pump is where they need to go and a uh, solar panels and battery storage will be 
um, if not essential, certainly extremely useful to make that feasible. Um, and that so so that's that's where they're where they're thinking. However, the current gas heating system is only five years old. So it won't, they're not looking to replace that imminently. I mean, certainly not for the next five years. So, you know, a bit of, uh, a bit of further detail there. Thank you, Siobhan. Peter? Um, just to echo John, uh, John and Claire's comments that um, I think we just need to take one step back and uh, provide a bit more guidance overall uh, because I do see in the next year a lot more coming forward and uh, it would be time well spent now if we just think about the kind of criteria, uh, what we're looking for from, uh, from these kind of buildings uh, and I think that will help us and help them. Can I say that I, I am disappointed, I, I, I would have thought that okay leaving the heating aside they could have tied this in with maybe LED lighting or or more energy efficient um, lighting. Um, it, it seems to me that an awful lot of this electricity is going to be sold back to the grid at, at no doubt at a, at a profit to the church. So I am a bit sceptical about this, I'd say. I, I, on its own, I'm not, as a, as a project, as a freestanding project, I don't think it's the right place to come for money. Um, so, you know, unless I hear, and, and from what I'm hearing, Siobhan, they're not intending to make this as part of, it's not part of a bigger project. Uh, you know, they've got aspirations, but they're not actually a project there. So I'm, I'm inclined not to, not to agree to it and to maybe signpost them to, I mean, if it, it would appear the church seems to have a, a fund anyway to do this. Um, so, so you know, I think we should signpost them to other sources of funding purely to put, you know, um, uh, VP panels on on buildings um, rather than the community fund, which is, um, you know, on the zero community fund, which is there actually to um, promote um, energy efficiency and and changes in lifestyle you know, to achieve our zero carbon. And this doesn't do either, I don't think. <laughs> Sorry. I think I'm hearing very polite comments from John, to be fair. And I, and, I, and, I, and extremely constructive, really. I mean, with Siobhan's help, uh, this applicant could be guided in the correct process, a uh, uh, correct, correct path, so that uh, perhaps they come back next year and uh, may, uh, Martin. Yes, I, mean, I, I, I do want to emphasize that the, the problem is that it's being used for lighting, which is going to be least demand in the time of year when you're going to produce the most. So the idea that you're exporting a lot is true. I don't think they'll make a lot of money because the rates that you earn on electricity you sold to the grid now is, is tiny. But, but, but the, um, if they, I think it is worth emphasizing that, for instance, if they were doing cooking, which will be a much greater use of demand on, on the energy and would work in the summer as well. It might be a much more practical project. Um, I, I think the project that worries me is that, either, that if they're doing properly and they have low energy writing, they really would probably be using quite a small proportion of the energy that they produce on church roof, which is after all quite a large, would be quite a large area, you think, of the size mm. of a church. Question, question, Siobhan, I don't know if you know, quite a lot of churches, especially these old listed churches, are illuminated at night to, to show off the building. I, I, is, is this such a building? I mean, taking John's comments about the fact that um, there can be some fairly um, new uh, upgraded LED or efficient lighting for outside, which would then facilitate the fact that it is being produced during the day and being used at night to actually look, you know, show off the building rather than using the, 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 the grid to do it. So. I, I don't know if that floats your boat, John. No, well, of course, it's the wrong time of the day, isn't it? I mean, you could offset it. You could you could say, you know, the electricity that was being produced um, during the day um, could offset the cost of the electricity being consumed at night. But I, I take up Martin's point. I mean, you know, this could be linked to 
um, a facility in the village, for example, or provide, you know, go into offset consumption of electricity by something else, like, for example, maybe I know they've got their hub, which so it's a bit difficult actually to to link it to the village hall, for example, but you could perhaps link it to some other um, project in gambling gay so that you offset the the electricity that's being consumed there. But as you know, as I say, it's it's so uninspiring that um, I don't think, you know, it's it's this it isn't the right place for it, I don't think. Claire first, then Martin. Um, yeah, so uh, can I also come back again to the point, the wider point? Because I do think that um, you, the officers or members together need to think about helping churches as um, listed buildings and where they will can remain possibly as places of worship and as community um, hubs. And they might need help with energy efficiency and i think you know we are going to get more of the we've already had several in the short time that this zero carbon grant has been going so i think it would really be helpful to have a little package uh of you know information for uh, for churches you're talking specifically for churches Sorry, Sorry, I am, because they're particular kinds of building and they play a particularly important role in many of the communities, even for people who don't go to the church. Um, you know, the, the building itself, the architecture itself, as well as what goes on inside. Is that doable, Siobhan? Uh, yes, absolutely. And, and if, if I can just take this opportunity to say thank you for, for all those comments. I've been writing them down. I, I think um, that, that's, that's very helpful than I... But, um, uh, I, I take your point, but I'm sure we can communicate that to uh, the applicant. Um, I think if I kind of can explain, I think where they're coming from, they, their roof is being replaced anyway, and they did see it as an opportunity. But I absolutely take your take your point that it's it's there's very little use for the electricity for at least the next five years until they get a new heating system and possibly possibly further. So um, uh, yeah, but we will. Um, we'll put together some information for churches. And the other thing that comes to mind is actually that energy, bespoke energy surveys, um, well, bespoke energy service, energy service is really what I mean. Um, it, it may be worth us um, uh, helping churches with those. Okay, yeah, quite good idea. idea. Martin? I would just emphasize that in proposals, the battery element is actually uh, very important. Um, the, uh, and in this case, this sort of use, you probably want battery elements lasting uh, sufficient for several days, not just for one. I mean, to give you an example, I've just had a solar system installed under the, ca uh, under the county scheme, and there is a fact, uh, two days ago, I think we produced 0.3 kilowatt hours in the whole day. The following day, we produced nearly 10. That's the sort of difference in, in production you get over the winter period. Uh, and you really do need quite a large storage to be able to be secure, secure of having a decent contribution in the winter period. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Okay, uh, members then, I think what we've heard from um, the member for finance, obviously Siobhan's case, and what the questions that have been asked here today, would I be right in saying that we're going to reject this on, on those grounds? Sadly, sadly reject, I think. And I think if we could use the word sadly, I'm sure we can do that, Chair, but I'm sorry, just, just a quick question. So we've agreed this uh, extra piece of uh, criteria to help churches with future applications. Is that to be brought back to committee for approval or how? Yes. I'm sure we've got a hand up. Uh, we'll, we will, we'll bring back um, uh, uh, pr proposals for, for small revisions to the to the scheme in any case. And we'll take this into we'll we'll include this in those, I would suggest. Thank you very much. That, that, in that case, then, that's, that's carried as a, a rejection. Thank you. Right. Is there a, the, one about rolling, rolling forward the... Yeah. Roll it forward. Roll it forward, members. Pete, yeah. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a yes, John. Okay, us, great. Please. Thank you. <laughs> and it, I would just say that I understand from accounts yesterday that the the way they do this is they create a reserve. Um, so it's it's a slightly different procedure to the rollover procedure. But if you're happy for accounts to do it in the in the in the most effective mm. way. Right, can can we have the ten percent interest rate attached to that one for us for this this particular committee? Thank you. Uh, if you can push it to eleven, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, agenda item number six, I believe. Uh, moving on to that. Oh, sorry, just Claire. Ask, can I just ask a general question about, as I said, the zero carbon gun? So, um, it would be really good to do something to get more parish councils to apply, because, you know, I think a bit of push to. Get them to apply. I don't know what we can do about that, but I do. I do think this is a bit like the big pool of water where you lead the donkey, right? And you you ask the donkey, "Would you like to drink?" And the donkey says, "Do you know what? I can't be bothered. I've got a bottle of water on my hip." So I think really, with this this council tries blooming hard. Right, and it, I don't know how much more it's going to do, rather than send officers out to Paris Council meetings and say, "Fill the form in now, right?" And here's an idea for you to use. I mean, other than that, I mean, these are people; these are grown-ups. They should be able to do it themselves. I really do. I'm trying to be very polite here, but you know, you, as I say, lead the horse. Okay. Um, agenda item number six, then, please. Who's leading on this one? Vic, is it Vicky again? Come back, Vicky. Sorry, yes, I'm here. Um, Over to you then. Thanks. Okay. Um, community chest funding applications. Only three um, this this month. The first one comes from Cottenham. Sorry, I'm just getting my notes up. Cottenham Colts Football Club. Um, they are well established. Um, long-running football club with over 300 members. And they're an integral part of the community supporting activity for children and social inclusion for volunteers, parents and families involved. The group have recently seen an increase in their membership, um, so they would like to purchase a pair of new movable goals for one of their teams. Um, the total cost of the project is £3,024. They're looking for £1,000 from Community Chest. Um, they will be meeting the shortfall via co-op community funding, um, a Benedge Association grant, both of which um, are waiting on uh, their pending decisions for those. But they have said that they will meet any shortfall with their club funds. Um, so, you know, regardless of whether they get those grants, they will still have <coughs> sub funds available to support that. Um, district councillor support, both Councillor Wilson and Councillor Goff support the project. The parish council support the project in principle, but unfortunately do not have any funds available to offer them financial um, help. So that is um, Cottenham United Colts Football Club. Thank you, Vicky. Anybody going to make a comment or are we in agreement? We will agree. That's an agreement. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thanks. Thank you. Um, next one comes from Great Chisel Bell Ringers, and they are a community group. Um, they were first established in 1998 and currently have 18 members. They ring the bells of St Swithin's Church in Great Chis Chisel, um, have practice and teaching sessions once a week. Um, ring the bells obviously before weddings and national events. They would like to increase their membership and recruit new and teach new ringers, um, but unfortunately their bells are in need of much refurbishment. Um, they say that initially their bells fell into disrepair in 1979 and they refurbished them on a shoestring so to speak, in 1999, just so they could ring them for the millennium. But they have been ringing them ever since. The, but the bells do require attention. Now, the group have been fundraising since sort of 1998, 99, um, and they have raised a total of £50,500 through fundraising, other grants, 
and also they've had a new bell donated to them. Um, so the total project is to renovate the five existing bells and install a sixth bell. Um, although they're still a shortfall of their project, they, they do require a total of £91,700 to complete the project. Um, the Essex Association of Charge Ringers have encouraged them to commence the refurbishment. They feel quite strongly that they'll secure other funding from, from other organisations. Um, the, the group issued a statement um, about their funding. Um, the group recognise that the project costs are a considerable sum of money for a small community to raise, but I have said that since being assured by the Essex Association of Charge Ringers and Whites of Appleton Limited, which are the bell hanging company, that their 35,000, which they've raised from fundraising, plus secured grants, put them in a strong position. Um, and there are several grant giving bodies who specialise in funding bell projects. So they've got applications with those, um, those other bodies. They also state that the church, as a listed building, the parochial church council should be able to reclaim any VAT. They have initial pledge to meet the cost of a six bell from a local benefactor. And I've detailed in the appendix um, the, the costs and also the fundraising that they've done to date. So the builders will cost 30,000, the bell hangers 58,700 and engineers 3,000. So a project cost total of 91,700. Fundraising stands to date at 35,600 and grants and other funding secured. Um, they've got £400 from the Sharp Trust, 3000 from the Barron Trust, 9000 from um, the Essex Association of Charge Ringers, 2000 from a group called EPRL, which I failed to find out what that, that acronym stands for, um, £500 from Stansted Airport, and a six bell costing almost 8000 has been donated. Um, the group have asked the Parish Council if they're able to offer support, but unfortunately, although being very enthusiastic about the project, um, are not able to donate any funds. They are applying for further grants, as I said, but for remaining funds, they are seeking local sp sponsorship from local companies and any shortfall will be underwritten, at least in the short term, by loans from their members. Um, I did ask the question why obviously the PC parochial church council weren't able to help and they said um, that the church has historically always been a separate financial entity from the bells although all bill all bills go through the PCC to claim back VAT and gift aid where possible the PCC has confirmed that due to other project commitments they are not able to give financial support the Church of England which is their governing body supports the project and has granted their permission to have the work done, but they are not able to offer funding either. So that is the uh, great chisel bell ringers. Sue. Can I just ask whether the 91,700 is pre or post VAT? I think, I think that, that would be... Um, post-VAT. So you could take 20% off that? Yeah. Which is a significant, but a thousand pound is a drop in the ocean, mm. it seems to me. And mm. and I'm, I'm not sure whether it's good use of our fairly limited resources in, in that situation, much as I uh, would welcome another church that rings its bell regularly. Um, uh, I'm very ambivalent about it. Thank you. Right. Uh, Peter, then Martin, then Claire. Um, thanks. Yeah, I'm just trying to... Um, I understand uh, Sue's uh, um, reservations. I'm just trying to think about our consistency. We have supported, you know, church clocks and other things uh, because they're very much community orientated for things like Remembrance Day and, and certain things. And so, uh, although this is a small part of the total that they've got to find, um, 
it seems they have worked pretty hard, um, including, you know, 7,900 from one person who's donated. So I, th I think, but I, I, I'd, I'd be open to um, discussions with others, that, that we would be consistent if we supported it. Um, I, I'm on the same view as, as Peter. I believe the Council of Macdonald. I think the, uh, it seems to me that they've done a lot of work to prepare for it. They've got a very consistent, uh, they've got a lot of support from other sources. It's a large sum, but the fact of having a thousand pounds support from the district council will be beneficial when they're applying for other, other grants because it will show that there's been support. It seems to be they're an enthusiastic group, uh, public um, uh, doing something which is uh, uh, which is their joy and uh, which provides joy to other people um, at some distance from the church, obviously because they're ringing the bells. Uh, and so I would thought it's a, a, a worthwhile, a worthwhile cause. Um, I'm not so worried about the fact that it's a small drop in the ocean in terms of thing. It, it, it's, a, it's a sign that it sends the message that it sends. That I think is important. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Claire? Um, yeah, so for me, the two things. One is the consistency. As um, Peter said, I think we should be consistent in what we offer uh, to churches. Uh, but then I've got a query. Um, the money from for the sixth bell, this is an additional bell. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. It's a pity that that seven, almost 8,000 couldn't go to um, repairing the other bells. It, I mean, that... It, that does seem odd to me, really, you know, that the benefactor wants a bell all to himself or herself. But um, Yeah, I think, um, I think the sixth bell was sort of part of the whole project of, of making the bell sound better in unison. Um, I, there was uh, something which I okay. perhaps should have put in the appendix that kind uh, okay. of said it adds to the, you know, the acoustics of the... The whole yes, ringing. for the ring it needed to be. Okay, yeah. that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, then I suppose I um, I would like to support this, and but I think I, I take the point about a thousand pounds being a drop in the ocean, but also Martin's point about having the support of the district council. But again, it comes back to being consistent about the money that we provide for churches and why we're doing it. And I think we probably need a little note about that so that we're very clear that we are consistent when we get applications for bells or clocks or whatever. Thank you, Claire. John? Yeah, thank, thank you. I, I, I like the, 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 the point about many people can hear the ringing. Um, I'm not sure whether that's good or bad, given that the bells are in a bad way at the moment and maybe it's blackmail. <laughs> if you don't give us the money, they'll still ring <laughs> badly. Um, the the point I want to make, and I've, I've made before when we've had these um, projects, which are um, which obviously are going to take time to to come to fruition because it requires a lot of money being gathered from places. In that, when if we give if we give money now, mm -hmm. it will tie up that thousand pounds, and you know until well until the end of this financial year, when we will then expect them to have spent it. Um, so, and they're obviously not going to be doing that. So I wonder whether, and I think we've done that in the past, where we just send send them a, a confirmation that we would, that we will support them as and when the money is needed. Because yeah. otherwise we're taking a thousand pounds out of our pot of money, which we could be giving to somebody else. Yeah, I did ask that question of them, um, because obviously I said, you're still quite a bit short. Um, and the group have said, in, and it's in the appendix, that they plan to start in February 22. Um, so they're kind of all set to go and using money from, although they're short, they're using money from their members to meet that shortfall at the moment. Um, so the, the, the works are planned for February 22. So OK, OK. So that's that's OK. That, that answers that question. Some very rich people living in Christmas. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bear that in mind for council <laughs> Yeah. Peter, um, I can I can donate a set of earplugs to Councillor Williams if he's worried <laughs> about the noise. Um, I can hear the bells in Whittlesford just about. Um, 
Yeah, I'm assuming they want to start in February because the Jubilee in June. So yeah. they, they have to crack on with it. Uh, otherwise, they um, there, there is a plan, I understand, across the country on that weekend for special bell bell ringing. I'm not, I'm not a bell ringing expert, but... Claire? Um, actually, thank you, Peter. That reminds me to ask. Um, so at a parish council meeting on Wednesday, um, I was asked um, if South Cams was going to be making any funds available for uh, the Jubilee, rather, as we'd done for uh, the anniversary of the war. Um, uh, that's a good question. I'm looking at the lead member for finance at the moment. Um, I don't know. It's something we'll take away and discuss in Cabinet. Peter? Um, yeah, I think it's not been discussed so far. Personally, I think we should, especially if we have funds available to roll, roll forward into the fund. But obviously, there has to be a decision, you know, in Cabinet and then for the Council as, as a whole. Um, it would be worth, in the meantime, if then and the officers can do a quick scout around other authorities and what they're planning to do or not do. I, I think that's a that. case of the uh, the officer class and the cabinet class on that one. Then we'll leave those leave those decisions to you, and you can tell us what we're doing afterwards. That's great. So on on the basis, and you've got something else to say on this, Claire. On the basis of this, this particular application, given the fact that John's face was happier when he found out it was February twenty two um, that they're going to be starting the work, um, are we minded one way or the other to support or not support? So that's a, that's a support here, John, from all of us. Okay. If you're okay with that one, thank you, Vicky. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and finally, um, an application from Orwell Carpet Bowls Club, um, a club that's been in existence since October 2004, and they currently have 24 members. Um, so bowling, as we know, provides exercise and social interaction for everyone who participates. Uh, membership to the club is available to all residents of Orwell and surrounding villages. <coughs> Excuse me. They wish to purchase a two-map wind-up storage handling, handling unit. Um, they say that the mats that they use are very heavy and difficult for some members to handle, carry and roll. So purchase of this unit will avoid anyone being injured whilst handling the mats and allow stay, safe storage of them. Um, the group have applied for other funding. Um, they've applied for £200 from the Parish Council. Um, it says in the appendix that the decision is pending. However, they since got back to me. I got an email from the group yesterday and they have been awarded that money. And also the Rugby Benev Benevolent Fund. They initially applied for £200 from them, um, but they have advised me that actually the, the, they awarded them £500. Um, which they weren't expecting. Um, so initially, although they were asking us for £492.95 towards the project, they actually only need um, 152, that should say 95, yeah, 152 um, to, to meet the shortfall. Um, so quite a small sum of money just for the purchase of these mats. They've done quite well with their other grant funding. Um, Councillor Van de Weyer has emailed and is in support of the application and obviously the parish councillor because they've given them some financial support towards it. So that Thank is you, the Carpet Bowls Club. Thank you, Vicky. Well, I'm looking around the room and I'm just thinking for £152.95 and p, it kind of does fit our criteria somewhat. So to save injury, should we have that as an approval? Yep. That's another one. Thank you very much. You're, You've got a hundred percent record at the moment, Vicky. Lovely. lovely. <laughs> Thank you. That well, that's me done. Right. Well, that, <laughs> on that yeah. on that note, on that note, Vicky, um, I think I speak for all of us um, uh, to say thank you very much indeed for your your work and your delivery uh, for us and uh, during the committee, what have you, and the the depth of detail. So that's really really lovely. Thank you. And um, that Cecilia has got a hard act to follow, and we we oh. will demand from Cecilia the same level of uh, of input. And uh, she's coming online now. <laughs> well, see, I know Cecilia; she only lives down the road from me, so we often meet for a cuppa. So, yeah, she'll take the Mickey out of me now afterwards. That's so good. 
All right, so <laughs> thank you, Vicky. I'm re we are really grateful uh, for that. Thank so you. Thanks. It's a pleasure. And uh, that brings me to the, unless there's any other questions from members, that um, brings me, yeah, yeah, John. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, the the next day to next meeting, um, I've got it in my dive for 2 p.m., but I see on the paper it's 10. Could you just confirm what time it is? Yeah, so originally... <laughs> this could be a problem for me. Yes. Right. Hey. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not here on that day. Can I ask, um, Catherine, Cecilia, Vicky, what, what business we have on this particular day? <clears throat> we have two things very likely. One will be any community chest grants that come in between now and then, although those could be held over. The other thing, though, is the Children and Young People's Grant, which is coming, and Leslie's bringing that to you. So we we really would like there to be a meeting. Um, should we work hard to bring that paper to you by the 17th so that people can be told before Christmas? Thank you, Chair. Um, I just uh, to add another bit into this, um, one thing I was going to raise is that there is a planning inquiry that uh, has been requested to be held at South Camps Hall in January, and that would go over when we usually host Grants Advisory Committee. So the likelihood is that we will either need to move venue or cancel the January Grants Advisory Committee. So I would say uh, if we could hold the December meeting, that would be best. Right. So is there, an, is there any opportunity to come a fraction earlier in that day that make any difference to you? Is it, um, my, my other meeting starts at nine right. and goes through to 11. Um, so uh, it would be difficult. Okay, Pete? Um, I don't know if this helps anybody else. I can do the 15th of December, but not the 17th. I think the challenge there would, for us would just be in making sure we have enough time to get the paper on the grants. Mm. With you, but we could, we could, we'd do our best if the fifteenth works. The time is very tight anyway, with the number of days available to write the paper. I think it's something like forty-eight hour turnaround. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, clear. The uh, fifteenth is JDCC, and that's uh, an in-person meeting in the Guildhall in Cambridge. So if if we have to be have to be here in person, we'd have to be a very well, early start, or we meet at Cambridge. Okay. What about what about the eighteenth? Let's do some overtime work on Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah past that one there. Right. Well, uh, okay. Well, look, we we. I think a lot of us have got other commitments um, that day, which are starting to rack up on us. Um, I suppose the obvious thing is to stay with the 17th. Um, is there any, is there, you said it was difficult for officers on that day? Uh, well, I, I know that uh, Les Leslie is due to present the Children and Young People's report, and I know that it would provide her difficulties to do it before 10 a.m. Yeah. yeah 10 a.m. Exactly. is a good time to start, but I appreciate the councillors can't make that. Mm. I can't make. Can, that can we not? Can all. we not do it? Can we not do it at two? No, I can't make it at two at all. Oh, right. right. Okay. You, you can, can. Yeah, I can do two. Well, I think. I think. Regardless, we we will be two members down in the sense that Peter is unavailable on Friday the seventeenth, and either uh, Councillor Hales or Councillor Ellington will be unavailable. We are obviously still court with with three members, um, uh, and I'm actually uh, just roping in Councillor Khan at this point in time as well to, to potentially see if we can get a sub for one of the others because we, we, we could proceed with the meeting. Um, could I ask uh, about the 15th? Um, but Catherine, were you saying that's too short notice? It, yeah, we need to have some, we need to have a week clear. Aaron, if you could confirm for me, we need to have a week clear to publish the paper. 
Correct. So if we held it on the 15th, the papers would need to be published by Tuesday 7th of December. That would be the de deadline for publication. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and unfortunately, if the paper came to me to look at before it was published, I've got parish council meeting on the Monday. So, you know, I wouldn't be able to look at it really before it was published. So what we're really looking at then, I mean, you're, are you available, Claire, at two o'clock? On the 7th. Yeah. Yes. Right, that's making it less painful then. Yeah. I think to make this as easy as we can for officers, I think we need to probably revert to the two o'clock. Is that two o'clock on the 17th? Yeah. So that, that gives yeah. you the time that you require for officers. And that John gives him the time to read the paper and that way around. Um, I'll have to give my apologies now and I'll, I'll hand this over to Sue if that's okay. That's sorry, fine. sorry, Sue. Um, but then obviously Pete won't be here, but Claire can be, and then we'll sort out some, and, some subs. And presumably Bill can be, but we need to check with Bill, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. 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 All right, so at the moment we have a cunning plan, but I mean, who knows what happens daily with people mm. having to isolate. So, I mean, that might be the other thing. That, you have to isolate, you have to isolate, so. Okay, in that case then, it's the 17th of December at two o'clock um, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, thank you once again. Thank you, Vicky, for the last time. Thank you. Um, and what have you, and uh, officers, John, and uh, thank you, members. And, and that concludes today's Grants Advisory Committee meeting. Thanks. <laughs>